for another exciting day of Peak Flix Math with your favorite teacher, Mrs. Dennis. Are you ready for another excellent day of teaching and learning? Oh, that's great. Today, we're going to have another great day as we learn more strategies to help us become better mathematicians. So let's dive in to lesson seven of Monster Math. Are you ready? Great. Let's get started. So as we know, whenever we start a lesson, we always have to know our objective for the day because that'll tell us what our goal is and what we're going to learn by the end of our lesson. So let's look at our objective. Our objective is I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. Let's say that again together. Are you ready? Okay, great. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and related facts. But before we dive into our lesson for today, as you know, we always practice our... Excellent, our fact fluency in multiplication because when we are fluent in our math facts, it helps us become better mathematicians. Are you ready for our fluency for today? Great, let's get started. So let's pay close attention to the worms and find the missing number. And remember, this will help us with our skip counting because skip counting is a great way to help us with our multiplication facts. So let's look at the first worm. We have four, eight, 12, 16, 20. And hmm, well, what do we think is the missing number? Well, first, let's see how many times they skip counted and what number they continued to skip count by. So if I start with four, well, how many more do I need to get to eight? Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need four more. Now let's see how many we need to get from eight to 12. Let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Are you starting to see the pattern here? Let's try from 12 to 16. Are you ready? Okay, ready? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm noticing each time I'm skip counting by four. Absolutely. We keep skip counting by four. So if I'm at 20 and I add four more, the next number will be 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Great job. And if we notice, we kept skip counting by four. So 24 is our missing number. Let's try another one. Hmm. Let's use what we did with the first worm to help us find the missing number for the second one. So I have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. So hmm, what is my missing number? Let's see how many times they skip counted to help us solve this. So let's see, from 7 to 14, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so, so far, I skip counted by 7. Now let's see how many I need to get to 21. Let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh-oh, I think I'm starting to see a pattern here. But let me just see how many I needed to skip count to get from 21 to 28. All right, ready? Okay, here we go, ready? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I keep skip counting by seven. So if I skip count by seven and my last number is 35, what is our missing number? Let us try this together. Together. Are you ready? Okay, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 40, 42. And so our missing number is 42. Great job, scholars. You are so smart. Now, let's try, and Miss Dennis is going to move herself over here. Let's try 
to complete the following sequence in the scarf. Hmm, I wonder what number they're using to skip count. Let's go through and see. Are you ready? Okay. We have five, 10. Hey, this looks a little familiar. Let's see. So from five to 10, let me think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So from 10, hmm, there's a number here that's missing and then it goes to 20. So I'm thinking we're skip counting by five. So if I have 10, and I add five more, I get, you got it, 15. Let's keep going. This should be very quick because we know our five facts. Let's go through and complete the sequence together. Are you ready? Okay, great. Here we go. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, great, 90, 95, 100. It's past 100. Let's keep going. Are you ready? Okay. 100, 105, 110, 115. Great job. 120. We finished our sequence. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Woohoo! Great job, scholars. Now, let's try more of our multiplication facts. Now, yesterday we learned the power of one. Now, we're going to be multiplying by, you guessed right, by two. And when you multiply by two, Think addition doubles. That sounds very familiar. We learned doubles already. And so when you multiply by two, you're just thinking about doubling the number. So if I have two times three, think about doubling three and I get six. Great job. If I have two times four, think about doubling four and you get eight. Great job. So now let's try this together. So if I have two times two, well, according to my rule, I'm going to think about doubling the two. So what is two plus two? Four. Absolutely. And so two times two is four. Great job. Are you ready to try some on your own? This time, you know what Miss Dennis is going to do. I'm going to time you. I'll give you 15 seconds to solve the rest of the problems. Are you ready? Oh, you can do better than that. Are you ready? Great. Here we go. Try two times three. You have 15 seconds. Think about the doubles. Are you ready? Okay. 15 seconds. Go. Which number would you double? Hmm. Okay, time's up. Two times three is... Uh-oh, six. I hope you got six because what number did you have to double? Excellent job. You had to double the three. And three plus three is six, which means two times three is six. Great job. Let's try another one. Are you ready? Here we go. Two times four. Fifteen seconds. Ready? Go. Think about, hmm, which number am I going to double? Okay, time's up. Two times four is great. Two times four is eight. Which number do you number do you think we had to double? You got it. Four, because four plus four is eight. Let's try another one. Here we go. Two times six, 15 seconds. You can do it. Are you ready? Get set, go. 15 seconds on the clock. Great 
job. Time's up. Two times six is 12. You got it because we had to double the six. And six plus six is 12. Isn't math fun? Give a round of applause for math. Woohoo! Now, let's continue on with our lesson for today. So, remember our objective. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. Well, I know what you're thinking. Well, Miss Dennis, what is the commutative property? Well, the commutative property is when you multiply the factors, which is another name for the numbers, in any, in any order, and the answer will be the same. Really take time to think about that. It means the commutative property is you can multiply the factors, which are the numbers, in any order, and the product, which is the answer, will be the same. Well, let's look at here. They have five times four is 20, and it is the same thing as four times five, which is 20. So what did they do? All they did was change the factors around, but the answer stayed the same. Let's continue to practice the commutative property together. So remember, it does not matter the order of the factors, the answer will still be the same. So if I have three times four is 12, hmm. Well, the commutative property says I need to change the order. So that means that four, times three is still 12. Whoa, that's the commutative property. It doesn't matter the order of the factors, the answer will still be the same. So remember our objectives. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. Let's take this problem for example. We have two times three. And let's model two times three with what we practiced yesterday using the array model. And so I know that the number two means the number of rows. So I'm going to have one, two rows with how many in each row? Three, absolutely. So I have one row with three in each row, and I have two rows with three in each row. And that means that this first row times two in each row, I mean three in each row, would give us six. So two times three is six. And now let Miss Dennis move over here because the commutative property tells us that it does not matter the order of the factors, the answer will still be the same. So let us now try what happens if we do three times two. That means how many rows should we have? Excellent job. We should have three rows. And how many are we going to have in each row? How many columns are we going to have? Great job. We'll have two columns. So let's draw that array. We have one, two, one row with two. Here's another row. And there's our last row, our third row. So we have one, two, three rows with one, two columns or two in each row. So three times two is one, two, three, four, five, six. Three times two is six. <gasps> wow, six equals six. Even though we change the order, it doesn't matter. We still get the same answer. Let's practice with another one. Remember, our objective, I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. So let's try another one. Now we have three times four. Well, how many rows are we going to have? Excellent job. 
we're going to have three rows because this number here always tells us the number of rows. And how many columns will we have? Great. We'll have four columns. So we'll have three rows with four columns or four in each row. Let's draw that array together. So we have one, two, three, and one row. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So notice Miss Dennis kind of did the array a little bit differently this time, but let's double check to make sure we have three rows with four columns or four in each row. So let's count the number of rows. Remember, rows go side to side. We have one, two, three rows. So that's checked. And we have one, two, three, four columns or four in each row. So that's checked. And now we have three times four is four, eight, twelve. Notice how Miss Dennis did her skip counting because I know that's a quicker way to multiply. So three times four is 12. So now let's practice the commutative property. Remember, it does not matter the order of the factors, the answer will still be the same. So I'm going to switch the three times four and now I'm going to do four times three with me having four rows and three columns or three in each row. Let's do that together. Let's draw that array. So I have one, two, three in one row. One, two, three in another row. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now let's count to make sure we have four rows with three columns or three in each row. Remember, rows go side to side. So I have one, two, three, four rows with one, two, three in each row or three columns. So that means four times three. Now I'm going to skip count by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve. <sighs> twelve. Four times three is twelve. So I know that it doesn't matter the order. The answer is still the same. <gasps> Isn't math so cool? Let's try one more together. And remember, we're demonstrating the commutativity of multiplication and practicing with related facts. So now I'm going to try four times five, where I'm going to have four rows and I'm going to have five columns or five in each row. I'm going to switch it up and now I'm going to do hearts. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five in one row. One, two, three, four, five in the second row. One, two, three, four, five in the third row. And one, two, three, four, five in the fourth row. Now, let's double check to make sure we have four rows with five columns or five in each row. So I have one, two, are you counting with me? Okay, good. Three, four in each row. I mean, four rows. And let's see if we have five counts or five in each row. One, two, three, four, five. So now, what is four times five? Well, let's skip count to check and see what is four times five. We have five, 10, 15, 20. So four times five is 20. So hmm, the commutative property tells me that it doesn't matter the order of the factors. The answer or the product will still be the same. So I'm going to take four times five and I'm now going to do five times four. And I'm going to see if I still get 20 as my answer. So now five times four is telling me 
that I need. <laughs> you got it. Good. I need five rows. And now I need four columns or four in each row. So let's draw that array together. We have one, two, three, four in one row. One, two, three, four in the next row. One, two, three, four in the third row. And one, two, three, four in the fourth row. And one, two, three, four in the fifth row. So now let's double check to make sure we have five rows with four columns or four in each row. So let's count together. Are you ready? Okay, ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. Great. We have five rows and make sure we have four columns or four in each row. One, two, three, four. Excellent job. We have four in each row. And so five times four is 20. But let's just count to make sure. This time, I'm going to skip count by fours. We have four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh my goodness. Four times five is 20. And five times four is 20. So the commutative property so tells us that it doesn't matter the order of the factors, the answer is still going to be the same. Now that we know this, Let's try with a word problem. Remember our objective. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and related facts. Mm. Let Miss Dennis move over here. So we can now read our word problem. The rock, paper, scissors team. Hey, I know that game. Rock, paper, rock, paper scissors. scissors. Oh, I got to get focused. Okay, back on the word problem. Are you ready? Okay. The rock, paper, scissors team needs chairs for their tournament. There will be five matches with two players in each match. How many chairs will they need? Hmm. Well, I'm first going to try to solve this problem by drawing a picture. So let me go back because I know when I solve a word problem, I always need to find the, yes, you got it. I need to find the numbers first, and I need to figure out, well, what is the problem asking me to do? So it's very important that we find those key words. Let's see. The rock, paper, scissors team needs chairs for their tournament. So I know they're going to need chairs. There will be five matches. So there's five matches, five. That's the number I first come across, five. Five matches with two players in each match. How many chairs will they need in all? So I know that there's this game, and there's going to be five matches with two players in each match, and they want to know how many chairs they're going to need. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture. Well, I know that there's five matches, so let me draw five matches. One, two, three, four, five. And Miss Dennis is going to move over here so that way we can look at our picture together. So I have one, two, three, four, five matches, so that's checked. And with two players in each match. I've been seeing that every time I see this word each, it's telling me that I need to multiply. So that means in each match, and there's five matches, each match needs two chairs for two players. So let's draw that picture. I need two chairs for one match, two chairs for the second match, one two chairs for the third match, one, two chairs for the fourth match, and one, 
two chairs for the fifth match. So I know there's one, two, three, four, five matches, and there are two chairs in each match. So this is telling me that I need to multiply. Hmm. Well, I have five matches times two players in each match, five times two. Let me count the total number of chairs. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So they're going to need 10 chairs in all. Hmm. Now, let me use this to draw my array model. Because I've been practicing so much with array models, I think it's important that I use my array to show my multiplication sentence. So, again, let's see. There are five matches, which means I need five rows. And there are two players in each match, which shows me that there are going to be two columns or two chairs in each row. Let's draw that array together. So I have one row of two, two rows, three rows, four rows, and five rows. Let me just double check to make sure. I have one, two, three for five rows with one, two columns or one, two chairs in each row. And so five times two, the total number of chairs is two, four, six, eight, 10. You got it. That means I have a total of 10 chairs. So, the question is, if we switch the grouping, will the results be the same? Hmm. If I switch the numbers, will the answer still be the same? Well, let's practice with another problem to see if this is true. Let's try with another word problem. Here we go. Remember our objective. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. So let's now practice with another word problem. And remember our burning question. If we change the grouping, will the answer still be the same? Let's try with a new word problem. The basketball team needs chairs set up for their game. Hmm. So first, it was the rock, paper, scissors team. Now it's the basketball team. The basketball team needs chairs set up for their game. The two teams need five chairs for each game. How many chairs will they need in all? Well, I think just like my last problem, I'm going to draw a picture because a picture will help me really see how to solve this problem. In order for me to draw my picture, I first have to go back and see the numbers. Because when I'm solving a word problem, it's very important that I find the numbers, I look for those key words, and I think about, well, what is the question asking me to do? Well, I know that there's a basketball team and they need chairs. The two teams, hmm. So right there, I know I need a number two. So there are two teams, and I know that they need five chairs for each game. Well, if there's two teams, that means that one team is going to need one, two, three, four, five chairs. And the next team is going to need one, two, three, four, five chairs. And so this is telling me, because I see that word each, and they want to know how many chairs are total, how many chairs do they need in all, I know that I need to multiply. So there are two teams times each team needs five chairs. So two times five is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten chairs. So they have a total of ten chairs. Let's draw an array model to practice to see if our picture matches what the question is asking us. So, I know there's a basketball team and there are two teams, which means I need two rows. And each team needs five chairs for each game. So, I need to make sure that I have two rows with five in each row or five columns. So, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five chairs in one row. And I have one, two, three, four, five five chairs in the second row. And so I know that an array model tells me that I have to multiply. So let's see, I have one, two rows because I know that rows go side to side. I have two rows times one, two, three, four, Five in each row, and so two times five is five, ten, because I'm gonna skip count, because I know that skip counting is the same thing as helping me with my multiplication. So five, ten, that means there are 10 chairs total. So let's go back to our question. If we change the orders of the factors Will the answer still be the same? Well, let's check and see. Miss Dennis is going to make herself a little smaller so we can really see our objective for today. So let us check and see. Well, are the results the same? What do you think? You think so? All right, well, let's see. I know that five times two is equal to two. So let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five rows with two chairs in each row because this is the first array that we've made. And then the second one told me that there were two teams and they needed five chairs each. And this was the second array that we drew where we had one, two rows with five in each row. So we know that five times two equals two times five. And we got a total of 10 equals 10. So yes, the answer is the same. It didn't matter the order of the factors. We still got the same answer. And that is the commutative property. It doesn't matter the order of the factors. The answer will still be the same. Loving commutative property. So now, scholars, it's your turn. I want you to use what we practice in our word problems to help you solve these problems on your own. So I want you to pause the video here and come back as soon as you are finished. Remember our objective, I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. Make sure you solve this problem in, on your whiteboard and in your notebook and continue to play this video when you are finished because Ms. Dennis will show you the answer so you can check your work. Okay, scholars, welcome back. Were you able to solve this problem? Okay, great. But guess what? We know in order to show the commutative property, we have to solve another problem using the same numbers. So now I want you to pause the video here and I want you to solve this new word problem. And remember our objective. 
I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts and make sure that you keep both your answers in your notebook or on your whiteboard because we're going to check our work when you come back. So make sure you pause the video here, read the word problem and solve it. And when you come back, we will go through the answers together so you can double check your work. Okay, have fun. Okay, scholars, and welcome back. How was it reading and solving your word problem? Oh, I know you got it because you are so smart. So let's go through and review our answers together. And remember our objective. I can demonstrate the commutativity of multiplication and practice related facts. So now my question to you is, are the results the same? Well, remember in the first problem, there were one, two, three, four, five, six rows in the parking lot. And the parking lot, the upper level, can only hold four cars in this each and each row. So if you notice, this should be your array where you have one, two, three, four, five, six rows with one, two, three, four columns or four in each row. And so that means that six times four should be your multiplication sentence. Now, let's look at how many cars can fit in the lower level. Well, based on our problem, we see that there's one, two, three, four cars in the lower level and each row can fit six cars. So you should have six in each row or six columns. Let's double check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six columns or six cars in each row. So that means that four times six should be your answer. So what is the total number of cars? How many cars can fit in the upper level and how many cars can fit in the lower level? Well, we know that our multiplication sentence is six times four for the upper level and four times six for the lower level. So we know that six times four is 24 and four times six is 24. So yes, the answer is the same. It did not order the, the it did not matter the order of the factors. The answer will still be the same. And that, my scholars, is the commutative property. Isn't it so cool? Great job. I am so proud of you. So now I want you to pause the video and I want you to practice these facts in your notebook. Remember to watch the video till the end because Miss Dennis will show you the answer so you can check your work. Have fun my mathematicians. You didn't pause, pause the video. Here we go, problem number two. You have to pause, pause the video so you can have time to solve these problems. Don't forget to pause the video. Okay, scholars, welcome back. Are you ready to check your work? Well, here we go. Draw an array that shows, that shows six rows of two. So we have one, two, three, 
four, five, six rows with two columns or two in each row. So your array should look like Miss Dennis's. And what is the multiplication sentence? Well, six times two is 12. Here's the answer to number two. Draw an array that shows two rows now of six. Well, I have one, two rows, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. So what is the multiplication sentence to match? Well, two times six is 12. And here is the final one. Write and solve multiplication sentences where the second factor represents the size of the row. So we have one, two, three, four rows with two in each row. So four times two is eight. And then we have one, two rows with one, two, three, four in each row. So two times four is eight. And that, boys and girls, is the commutative property. And so as we conclude our lesson for today, I want you to remember to go on to learn and use Reflex Math to practice your math facts. Because every day that we use these programs, we become better mathematicians. And now I want you to have an amazing day. This was a great day of teaching and learning. And let's dance as we see each other tomorrow for another exciting day of Peak Flix Math. I'll see you later, scholars. Mwah. Have an amazing day. Bye.